I hope and pray and bless that you know our God through the word and prayer and stand firm and bold as Christians. The Lord God will raise us as the lights of the world, shining like stars forever and ever. Do you want that? Say amen. You and I must stand strong and take actions as mere Christians. Why? Because this world and its power and views always threaten the people of faith in Jesus Christ. The worldly forces never fail to notice those who are weak in faith, even in a church. And then also, actually, we can see somebody in a church who break their covenant with God and do evil. The dirty enemy, the Satan, always lure with temptation and cause hate and conflict through that people. Their presence in a church makes our hearts heavy. It attacks our faith and spirituality, making our church lives difficult. But you know what? People who know their God will stand firm and take actions as a Christian, faithful Christians. Those who maintain intimate relationship with God remain unwavering and powerful. They are people who uphold the divine covenant with God. Yes, covenant, covenant. Covenant, the Hebrew word buried, was a very common concept for biblical era and people, and also it's a very important word we have to understand, to, uh, we, have, we have to understand to know God's words more. The buried covenant, it was a public and official declaration of a contract made by two parties. You would see buried in the context of marriage, adoptions, or treaties between nations in ancient, a, ancient time. The covenant was about forming a relationship and making a public announcement of that new formed relationship. For example, husband and wife, and father and son, child, children, and uh, you know, the strong nation could be the nation of the Lord, and the weak nation is kind of the treasure of the Lord. There is a new relationship. And covenant would have certain rules and expectations for both sides to maintain that new public relationships, and the two parties would grow more intimate as they uphold their promises and responsibilities or law and principles. Our God, God used this word covenant to explain his relationship with his people, you and me. He made a divine and universal declaration of his relationship with his people. The Lord will stand as our sole purpose and way of life. That means he is our God. And God, our Father God, will be our provider and protector. There is a new relationship between God and us. And the covenant is about making a public announcement. God forms this covenant with those who, listen carefully, who already received salvation. Are you with me? God always make the covenant with the people who have received salvation from God. The Lord wants to form a covenant, covenant relationship with those who are delivered from sin and death and it demands our decision. Why? Because after salvation, we have become free person. We have freedom. We have freedom from sin and death. You may say, Amen. Of course. We are free. We are free because God saved us. And then God asks us, God demands our decision to make a covenantal relationship. Covenant. Covenant relationship. Okay, you are a free person. You have a freedom. So with that freedom, 
You want me. You want to make me your God, the only God, the only purpose, the only ways you're going to live in your life. If you have a decision like that, I'm going to be your protector. I'm going to be your provider. I'll always be with you. That is the covenant. So that he teaches us how and what it means to uphold the covenant relationship, leaving the received blessing and grace and influence. For example, that is a ton, Ten Commandments is a good example. It provides us with the laws in accordance with the word and character of God. We are not saved because we kept that law. No, no. We were saved already and invited into the covenant relationship by grace alone. And then the law, the word of God, the principle of God is telling us to live appropriately to that received grace. So covenant is very important. Covenant relationship is very important. Uh, making covenant relationship with God is to know, experience God more. It is a very important life for Christians who have already salvation, who have, who have already, who, 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 say again, have already salvation from God. But, unfortunately, we see people breaking the covenant so quickly after salvation. They were delivered made their decisions before God, and entered the covenant to citizenship in God's reign. But they betray that covenant. They commit evil. They make other things their God. That is betrayed to betray the covenant. They go to church, but act without care about God. They live by their own rules and views, both in their work and even in a church. As a result, they bring corruption and they make trouble. They make problem. Such people exist throughout biblical history, church history, and they exist in the modern era as well. That's not easy to see. Easy for us to see and watch, witness. But people who know their God, who remain steadfast in the intimate covenant relationship, never ever waver. They remain strong and they take action as mere Christian. The spiritual journey of Daniel shows us what it means to live bold and unwavering in God's divine covenant. So today's question is this. How do we stand strong and take action as Christians in an era of corruption? That is a message we have to listen to today. Number one, we need to have conviction in the word of God. Amen. Yes. We must have conviction in the word of God. You want to know the truth, the truth, the word of God, and stand with conviction. You must place your trust in the word of God <coughs> rather than, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> rather than you must place your trust in the word of God rather than your immediate surroundings. Don't place your trust in your circumstances or situations. Place your trust in the word of God, the truth. In his youth, Daniel in the Bible was taken as a, as a war captive in Babylonian, Babylonia and was sold to Babylonian palace. He was in a state of despair. 
But no matter the circumstances, he lived upholding the covenant law of God, placing his trust in God's words rather than his situation. Therefore, he had a decision like that. Look at Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. It's quite famous, right? But Daniel resolved to mind, have a decision that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. Daniel made a choice and strengthened his conviction. He chose to stand firm upon the God's law with a tangible action. This is the kind of conviction we also must uphold. Daniel didn't want any gap between his spirituality and reality. He refused to corrupt himself spiritually, so he challenged his reality. He went to his chief manager and made his stance. For Daniel's unwavering conviction, God responded with grace and compassion through the chief. The chief allowed Daniel. You know what? Actually, he could have just ignored this little world captive boy. But for some reason, he decided to listen and give Daniel a chance. The chief gave Daniel and his friends nothing but water and vegetables for 10 days. When he saw that Daniel and his friends were healthy and strong, he allowed Daniel to maintain his diet. And Daniel was able to uphold the covenant law principles of God's words. Who did that? God. God protected them. Why? Because he had decided to follow God's words. Why? Because he had a conviction in the word of God. Here, we must notice Daniel's conviction in God's word and covenant laws. He made his choice, voice, and stance not to suit his immediate situation, but to follow God as his purpose. This is a character that we must acquire. I know we are humans. When things go sour, we tend to trust our thoughts and experience more than God. This weakens and breaks our faith. When the moment of truth comes, we must make our choices, form your stance, strengthen your conviction with his word, and remain in God's words. In our steadfastness, the Lord will make us strong and guide our actions as Christians. The time we can be stronger, stronger. As you know, Apostle Paul also had pronounced conviction in the words he received. So when his ship was struck by a storm in the middle of a, you know, the, 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 the Mediterranean Sea, putting everyone into spare, he alone stood strong and declared boldly like this. Look at Acts 27, 25. It's one of my favorite scripture. So man... Take a heart. Why? Because I trust God and believe that I have been, what I have been told will come true. Amen. Amen. It should be our confession declaration before people. Seek faith and conviction. Know that what God has declared will manifest true and good. You are a delivered person. You have salvation of God. So that, my friends, read the scripture, the Bible, every day. And hold on to the word of God given to you in your intimate and spiritual relationship. Receive God's words through prayer. And stand with conviction. Make your choice and uphold the law of God, principle of God. Confess your faith like Paul like that. 
I trust God and believe that what I have been told will come true. You will behold the amazing might and mystery of God. When you place your conviction in God's words, being strong and taking action, you will experience our God is the awesome God. Awesome God. Therefore, number two, uh, when, we, uh, when, when, when we have the, when we are strong and take actions, we must recognize the sovereignty of God. Remember and recognize, recognize and remember the sovereignty of God. People who know their God, strong and active in faith, ultimately learn to recognize the sovereignty and glory of God's governance. When you live with conviction in God's word, growing your intimacy and compassion with God, you also grow to remember and recognize God's greatness in your daily lives. Like, how great thou art. The core essence of the book of Daniel is not about the heroic adventure of Daniel and his friends. It's about God's sovereign reign in all creation and in all human history. How he greatness and governance transcends all. That is the main point of the book of Daniel. The Lord revealed the univer that, that universal truth through Daniel, who knew his God. The essence of Daniel stands true, to, st uh, the essence of Daniel stands true to this day. We must live with clear recognition about God's greatness and reign, where in our reality, even though we are witnessing bad things, difficult things from this worldly power. We need to recognize and remember God is reigning everything. Only then we can live as strong, bold, we can live as strong, bold, and active Christians. When you see the chapter 4 in the book of Daniel, there is a story about Daniel interpreting a strange dream of a king, Nebuchadnezzar. He dreamed about big and strong tree, rich with green leaves and fruits, feeding the people, animals, and birds. But suddenly, a watcher, its holy messenger, appeared descending from heaven. And the watcher cut down the tree, trimming its branches, and stripping the leaves, and uh, scattering the fruits. All animals and birds left. And the holy messenger told the tree that his mind will be that of animal instead of a man for seven years. After hearing the dream, Daniel interprets its meaning. And it is the main point of the, his interpretation of his dream like this. Look at Daniel chapter 4, verse 25. That you shall be driven from among men. And your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven. And seven periods of time shall pass over you. And this is a very important point. Till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of man and gives it to whom he will. This is the main point of the book of Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar was to live in Manis for seven years and then restored. God revealed this future to him to show truly who truly reign above all. Throughout the book of Daniel, we see the declaration of the truth, God's sovereignty of this world. After Nebuchadnezzar, after, after Nebuchadnezzar, like Belshazzar and Dario. This repetition shows that the one who conquers, reigns, and governs the world is not kings, but 
God alone. God, God reigns all over the world. What does it mean? God is governing our lives too. Such a perspective was a nonsense for the people at the time, actually. The way people viewed and interpret their reality was that, that whenever the stronger nation defeats the smaller nations, uh, whatever deity and religion of the smaller nation is now considered powerless or dead. That's how the ancients used their gods to conceptualize and represent their warfare. They viewed their war as a battle between gods. And at the time, the nation of the people of Judah were defeated captives. But somehow, the god of these defeated captives stands above the kings, nations, and gods of global superpowers. Daniel revealed this truth to kings and those who thought they ruled the world. And God showed his sovereignty to them. The mysterious point we must notice is how the dominant superpower is switched through different kings. But Daniel, a man who knew his God, remained in his position. The nations and kings were replaced over and over, but Daniel always there to announce this truth. God's sovereignty, his governance. It was through Daniel for kings to know that the Most High, our Father God, rules the kingdom of man and gives it to whom he will. Here, we see the greatness of God and his reign. Daniel was, was a war captive. His reality was cruel. And he had to work under the worldly powers. But despite such reality and its gravity, Daniel became a man of divine influence to the most powerful laws of the world. How was this possible? Daniel was a man who upheld his covenant relationship with God. Because he was a man of a word and prayer who knew the sovereignty and glory of God. His awareness and knowledge raised him as a strong and bold man of God. Same to us. We too must live in this world, not in heaven yet. We must work under the powers and values of the worldly views. But we must remember to recognize that all creations are under the divine reign and sovereignty of God our Father. Remember and praise that our God is an awesome God, great big God. So we can praise God like that, Psalm 145, verse 13. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. And some scripture, some, some scripture says, The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. Amen. Our spiritual strength and boldness are determined by how much conviction and recognition we hold for God. Who God is in your mind. God is the creator. He is the almighty and he's still a graceful and caring father who, tend, who tends our, to our needs. He is the Lord of blessings, who gives us with blessings and guides us to properly use them. God is our protection. God is our shield. God is our reward. Remember 
who God is and recognize who God is. At the time, naturally, we can, we can place ourselves to the place of prayers. And then we can grow up as a prayer, pray person, praying person. So number three, to be strong and take action, we must grow as a person of prayer, personal prayer. When you live with conviction in God's word, recognizing his divine reign and sovereignty, we naturally come to pray. Daniel's life was centered around prayer. He always prayed to recognize and understand the will of God. One day, he read the writings of prophet Jeremiah and gained understanding of the word. And the next action he took after that, he fasted and prayed. He had decision, determination to pray, to pray. When he faced a challenge from the writing of Jeremiah, he was determined to pray with fasting. You know what? Prayer always requires determination. Because prayer is not easy. It's not easy. Prayer is not happen automatically. It doesn't just happen. Because prayer is not just a deep sigh groaned in the time of difficulties. Of course, you can do that. You can do that. But prayers we want to have is an intimate conversation with the Almighty that grows us Christian to be strong and active. Therefore, prayer is not easy. Prayer is about self-evaluating through the scripture, the word of God, transforming in accordance with the word of God. Prayer is seeking God's help to become new and whole. That's why I can say prayer is not easy and we must have determination to pray before God like this. We need conviction and dedication for prayers. Prayers always require determination. Daniel, in the Bible, prayed no matter the circumstances. He knew his prayer habit would throw him into a lion den and to be killed. But, he continued to pray in the same time, in the same place, with the same posture. His prayer was unwavering and bold, steadfast and true. So, it grew. Now, his prayer repented for the sin of his people and Israelite history. His prayer was grown up like that. This is a man who stayed spiritually innocent and whole, even when he was captured as a youth. But he prayed, not for his own gain or own sin, but for fulfillment of God's vision, his words. He never relied on his own experience or accomplishments, his righteousness, but he sought God's grace and compassion. That is the grown prayer. Let's just see the Daniel chapter 9, verse 18. That is the Daniel's prayer. That is the um, very grown, grown prayer for Daniel. Oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolation and the city that is called by your name. Cause we do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. Amen. God is a merciful one. 
God always gives us his mercy. So you may pray before God like that. And then verse 19, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake. O oh my God, because your city, your people are called by your name. It's very familiar, right? Lord, hear. Lord, forgive. Lord, we say Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. Why, Pastor Young, he always asks you cry out Jesus' name three times? Yes, it's according to this word. Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake. Daniel was a man of endless prayers. He was a man of conviction whose confidence was in God's word. He was a man who saw and recognized God's reign and sovereignty in his reality. So that Daniel matured as a man of prayer who sought God's providence and intervention. He was raised and refined into a man of God, strong and active, unwavering and bold. He was a wise man who brought many people back into righteousness and repentance like that. We can be like that too. When you have the trust in his word instead of my circumstances and situations, we can find out his sovereignty in our reality. And that makes us to pray deeply before God like Daniel. At that time, we can understand what righteousness is. We can be right people to, to lead people to the Lord, our Jesus Christ. At the time, the Lord promises us that we will be raised and anointed into greatness and holiness, guiding others into faith like this. Look at Daniel 12, 3. It is God's promise for us. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness, they will shine like the stars forever and ever. This is the promise of God. His promise. That should be our story.